Nano KVM Pro. It just got a software update and I'm a lot happier with it now. So I'm really glad to be doing this video. This is from Cypeat. And this is the desk plus Wi-Fi plus PoE. You can do desk plus PoE, you can do desk, you can do desk Wi-Fi. Cypeat so did the Nano KVM. We did a video on it. I liked it so good, I've ordered a case or two for our use around the office. They're really good, but they're also really cheap and they're kind of slow and they do the job and they do the job well, but it's like 1080p, 30 FPS. And if you install Tailscale or something on this, it's basically maxed out the CPU and there's really not a lot of headroom. They noticed that a lot of people like us like um, higher end things. And so they've really gone overboard with the engineering on this. This thing is a speed demon, but let's take a look at it and let's take a look at the feature comparison between the two. Is it worth the extra spend? For most people, I don't think it will be, but this is capable of 4K. It's capable of ridiculous speeds for hosting ISOs and everything else. This might be an important part of your crash cart because it also has 4K pass through and some other neat features. Let's unbox it, let's take a look. And let's look at the rack mount accessories as well. Cause yeah, you can do rack mount. Even like the uh, the small rack, you notice it's not it's not 19 inches. They, they've noticed their finger is on the pulse of home labbers. Also, you can hook up an LED strip. Okay, what do you get in the box before we get into the fancy accessories? I mean, look at this thing. It's got a knob and an LCD screen and like a little interface. Let's take it out of the box. Power, five volt one amp or PoE. If the screen is black, avoid incompatible USB hubs. Some only work at 30 Hertz, yes. Windows on Windows, settings, advanced display, advanced display, display after set the resolution and refresh, yes. Sometimes passing through, you get you know, a monitor that's like, I can do this. You can't. There it is. It's tiny. It's a metal case. It's got some screws hidden behind the rubber feet. Hidden-ish. There's some lumps there. We've got HDMI in, HDMI out, a micro SD card, USB-C power, USB-C aux, USB-C hid. We've got the five pin dip header, the 0.1 millimeter header, and then our gigabit ethernet interface that can also do PoE. And then you get your button click wheel thing on the front. Now this is your ATX header. This will let you break into the ATX header on your motherboard. And so you can use the included dip cables and this will take control of power and reset. And so you can do out of band management for your machine. If your machine hard locks or your machine has a problem, you can use this to hard reset it. This gives you uh, a very similar feature set to what you get in a server class motherboard in terms of being able to remote into the machine even while it's off and work on it, especially when you consider the power over ethernet aspect of this. Also included in the box, you get two USB A to C cables and a short HDMI cord. Let's see. It does get a bit toasty when you enable the AI function because the CPU is running at like 70, 80% utilization all the time. So the AI, stuff is a little bit of a toy, but it is an amazing, interesting toy. Also the case really picks up fingerprints. If I had some complaints, uh, the, the rotating button, it feels kind of cheap and plasticky, like I'm gonna break it off, but fortunately I don't have to use it that much. And the touch screen is a touch screen, or the screen is a touch screen. So you don't really have to use the button either. You can just push it as a button. You don't have to like turn it. Now another completely unhinged, but I love it feature of the new Nano KVM is because it can read the screen and it has a pass-through that you can do LED strip control, like addressable RGB, and that's built in. So if you want ambient lighting, think Philips Hue, like the color behind the monitor matches the thing, then this is a relatively inexpensive device to do that. So while you're gaming, you can have light behind your monitor that matches the color of the stuff that's on your display. And there is a pretty good walkthrough for how to do that. So yeah, it's gonna look like this, and you're gonna have that with the Nano KVM, and then for the accessories, you have to have a, a USB-C Y cable. So this is an extra accessory thing that you order. It comes with solderable uh, corner strips. Oh, you don't have to solder it. It can also just uh, friction fit. And so uh, this gives you data on one side and power on the other, and you install from the left side, and so one, two, three, four, so that the addressing and the color looks right, because this matters because if there's red in the top left corner of the screen, then it needs to know, right? And then you could cut the LED strip to size with your monitor and then, you know, put them out. It's like the number of LEDs on opposite sides must remain consistent. So you, you have to count 
but then and then here's your friction fit adapter for the the pass through or right angle adapter and so this is what you end up with and so then that will snap together like that no soldering required although if it was me i would solder it but no soldering required the led strip attaches like this it's connected to your kvm you toggle it on in the software it looks like this doesn't matter if you have a 15 inch monitor all the way up to a 43 inch monitor just whatever you got to get in terms of led light strips and the power supply is not from the nano kvm the power supply is external that's why the y cable so you can add ambient lighting <laughs> using your nano kvm with your desktop machine which is you know, sort of fun. Now this is a, this is a, you know, a USB KVM IP adapter review. You wouldn't think this would also be a case for why anti-cheat is, you know, locking out Linux users is idiotic. But let me show you why, you know, it's, oh, you're using Linux, we can't anti-cheat. Uh, let me show you something that's amazing. All right, an AI agent controlling your machine via hardware, yes. And this, if you change, like, you use pass-through EDID for monitor identification and you don't use any USB peripherals that are a dead giveaway and you harden the software by making the timing imprecise, like the, the, the timing between button clicks is imprecise and the timing between this, that, and the other is imprecise. Look at this. You can do agentic AI. An AI can do vision processing of the display and then send commands. The KVM is not doing the computation here. There is nothing untoward or nefarious on the KVM. Instead, what it is doing is providing a hardware facility for a large language model on your network or on, don't don't run it on the internet. Like you could hook this thing up to Claude and like expend Claude tokens and Claude could be doing all sorts of crazy stuff with this. That's fine, I guess, but don't don't actually do that. Instead, what you can do is build an AI system on your LAN that can see the screen and then you can plug this thing into that thing programmatically. So it's all running locally. It's running on your machine, your hardware, your AI configuration, your AI account, your AI whatever. It's just a convenient API interface in order to be able to access the uh, screen system and send commands via the keyboard. So if you wanted to build a StarCraft agent to play StarCraft at a ridiculous speed, it is literally doing that by screen scraping and sending keys. This is completely undetectable, unlike, you know, that's the argument. It's like, oh, if you're running a virtual machine, then the anti-cheat software could be running at one level, or the cheating software could be running at one level higher than the anti-cheat software that is meant to detect it. And so, oh, people that use Linux can cheat. Uh, I, I, as I've said for years now, that ship has sailed, that it doesn't, I mean, yes, but no, not really, as a practical matter. If you're going to cheat, there are other ways to cheat, and the, the cheaters will continue to cheat. You only inconvenience people that play games. The proof is in the pudding. Here's a piece of hardware that is literally undetectable. And you could use it for exactly the same kind of game cheating. Now, I actually think there's a lot of other more interesting creative uses for this. This opens up a lot of possibilities. This opens up a lot of possibilities for me in terms of, you know, automated testing and dealing with things. Because when we have, like, scripted game testing, game updates and things like that can really mess with things. But if I can put together a little AI that knows how to benchmark Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that could be a time saver for me. And that means that I could get more done. And that would be fantastic. And so just <laughs> this, this, like, this is a device development exploration platform for people like they're going to sell all of these just just for this just for people doing experimentation which is amazing and brilliant and awesome and and they're doing it in such a way that you're not dependent on third party or cloud services like if you want to audit the code you can if you want to run everything entirely locally you can they've given you all the tools in order to be able to do that which is fantastic otherwise i would be a lot more skeptical also notice if you're using the AI thing, there's lots of warnings and cat gotchas and caveats. This is an experimental feature. This is meant for developers and, uh, you know, this is like a 0 0.1. This is not even a Model T. This is not even an internal combustion engine. This is, you know, maybe we got something a little bit off the ground at Kitty Hawk before uh, we crashed and scraped our knee really bad. But it's a start and it's interesting and it's creative. Now the ATX front panel interface for this actually goes through USB-C, but it's not USB-C electrically, it is USB-C with a cable, so be careful and don't accidentally plug that in with the aux header. The 0.1 millimeter header that's on the back, that is two RS-232 serial ports and a ground pin. And so you can use that to connect to, you know, a serial port and 
have serial devices connected. So like you could connect that to say a uh, out of band management for an ethernet switch or something like that and be able to have a console on a server, but then also a secondary console that is a serial console to a switch or two uh, as, as you need. So that's a pretty cool feature. This header plug into your motherboard and then the USB port can go to the Nano KVM. Understand this is not exactly USB, like it's not really a USB connection here, they're just cleverly using USB. But then your front panel headers plug into the headers on this breakout card. So this gives the Nano KVM control to reset, turn your machine on, but also see the status of the LEDs. Like if your hard drive or your power light is on or off, the Nano KVM will show that. If you're worried about the Nano KVM software, even though it's on GitHub, you can also run the Pi KVM stack. This is open source. And so there's already a proliferation of third party open source developers working on this platform. It supports tail scale, as I mentioned before, for remote access and everything else, but you can roll whatever you want on it because it's a Linux system. And this is ARM based, unlike the, the other one, which is RISC-V based, like you get a little bit more computational horsepower here, so you can do a lot of creative stuff with it. And I think it, developers are gonna adopt a lot of interesting things with this. Power utilization here all the time is about five watts. It's from 4.3 watts to about 7.5 to 7.8 watts, give or take. The highest power utilization is when you are using 4K30 plus the AI features. The AI features really, there's something running in the background there that's just chewing up CPU all the time. It's only two cores, but it's two ARM cores. Fast ARM cores, well fast for this class of device. So here we are capturing at 4K 30 Hertz. Now it's important to understand it can pass through 4K 60, but it can't pass through 4K 60 and capture 4K 30. You can capture and pass through 4K 30 or you get nothing on the HDMI capture and 4K 60. Sometimes Windows forces 4K 60 as a mode, and in that case, your HDMI capture is not gonna work. You can look at that under the settings here and see Wi-Fi, HDMI, pass through it, HDMI capture, and it gives you the info with the little pop-up to tell you what's going on. And there's also a mouse jiggler. You can stop the machine from going to sleep. Doesn't that seem handy? So this is useful for measuring the latency. It's a kind of hall of mirrors because I'm capturing from itself the question is how much time elapses as it transitions to each nested version of itself. You can take that number and average it and get a pretty good idea of the real world latency, which is quite good on this platform. That extra CPU horsepower really helps here. You can also customize the screen and customize the application. It's a full Linux system. You can SSH into it and do all sorts of fun awesomeness. And remember, if you don't like the Nano KVM firmware, it is fully Pi KVM compatible. You can install a completely different operating system on it and be ready to go from there. You know, under the hood, it's like a gigabyte of memory and 32 gigabytes of eMMC. So, you know, it's, it is relatively modest, but I ordered three of these. So that should tell you, like, I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of this. Now, when I'm using this with the level one text KVM, for remoting in, you do have to use an option in the GUI that makes the HID like a dumb HID mode because the our KVM doesn't support having all of those endpoints for mounting the the drive and all that other kind of stuff. Maybe that's something I can I can improve on my side. But it is compatible with sending you know like scroll lock scroll lock one scroll lock scroll lock two three four for selecting inputs on um, a KVM, which is fantastic. And I thought I was going to use the built-in hardware scaler, and I think in some scenarios I might. And it's not, it's not really a hardware scaler or a hardware 4K capture because it can do hardware 4K 30 capture. I think I'm still going to use the hardware um, thing that we have because I can take a 4K 60 input and turn that into 1080p 60. It's a hardware scaler, but it's still a 60 hertz refresh rate. And yeah, it's lower resolution, but I find that the 1080p 60 is a little faster and more responsive over the network, which is not a fault of the device at all. Like that's not, it's just, it's a bandwidth and math thing. And even though it's 4K scaled to 1080p, for remote access, it is good enough for what I intend to be doing. But 4K 30, being as responsive as it is over the network is pretty nice. That is way out in front in terms of the features of this type of, uh, this type of uh, remote KVM, an IP KVM type device. And the fact that even with all of the, the tariffs and nonsense, which by the way, you'll probably be able to get a refund for that 
at some point. It's like we're paying money into this thing that's probably going to be found to be illegal and we'll probably start getting a refund. Like there's already lawsuits that are spooling up. And that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other different thing. Even at like a hundred bucks for this, it is a fantastically good deal for the functionality that you get and the flexibility and the open source nature of this and like the forward looking forward compatibility. Like I'm genuinely surprised and shocked at the clever ideas and just like the, the entrepreneurial, like there's a bunch of these kind of devices in the market now and it's hard to have something that stands out in terms of innovation, in terms of implementation here and ideas and everything else. It is amazing. The build quality of the Jet KVM is still higher than the build quality here, but in terms of innovation and creativity and thinking outside the box, I am really impressed with what Cypede has come up with, which is why I ordered three more. Uh, also, I don't think Jack KVM, KVM shipping to the US anymore either. But anyway, I'm Wendell's Level 1. This has been a quick look at the uh, Nano KVM Pro. It really is. It's actually a pro device. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't wait to see the Nano KVM Pro 2. Keep going. Keep going on this path. It's exciting. I'm Wendell's Level 1. If you have any questions or I miss anything or you're going to try something, let me know. I was also going to demo this with the uh, the N5 NAS that we reviewed recently from Minis Forum, but it, 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 you don't need to. It's fine. I was, because this is running Proxmox now, and that's a whole other different video, and it's interesting. But this is not running at 4K 60 or 4K 30, so instead I've I've demoed it with the the GMK Tech, which... You know, it's working great. Anyway, I'm a little slow. If you have any questions or I miss anything, hit me up in the forum. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.